Hey there YouTube, this is SGM 436 back with another review video. This time I was contacted by a company that deals mainly with, um, I guess sort of like retail, um, sort of uh, like consumer appliances. Or, well, not really consumer, I guess it would be more like for a storefront. Anyway, the company's name is, um, hopefully I'm not butchering this, Munbine. And uh, they make various like uh, printers and that kind of stuff for like receipts uh, so that companies can um, keep track of like inventory and do um, sales receipts and all that kind of stuff. And it's pretty neat. And um, I was actually interested because a lot of the stuff that I get tends to be consumer oriented, but this is obviously more for a business, like a small business. Uh, so anyway, um, comes in this nice little box here and you can see it has a few uh, instructions, and one of them is actually um, mostly more important than the other ones, this one, uh, with the instructions on how to actually set it up. Now, there is an associated app called uh, Loiverse, POS, Point of Sale, and you can get it from the Google Play Store and create an account, and basically it's there's a free free version, and then the um, you can pay to unlock extra features that you can do inventory management and a whole bunch of extra stuff that... Uh, a lot of uh, small stores might not need. But even with the free version, you can actually print out um, receipts and um, for customers and that kind of stuff. And it's pretty neat. I set up an account, and I haven't really used it much because I don't, I, I don't really sell stuff. Um, so I'm probably not going to use it in that capacity. However, um, there is an Android app, and you can uh, search Moonbine Android and install the APK. And that'll allow you to do actually some quite interesting stuff. Anyway, um, I printed out, as you can see, a number of uh, things. I'm just going to take these out. There, It does come with a CD, and the Android APK is also on the CD, buried somewhere within the menu, but it's actually probably quicker just to Google it. And um, just a uh, nice little card from them of uh, different products that they sell. Yeah, they have like uh, thermal printers, I guess card readers, cash drawers, um, barcode readers, all sorts of cool stuff. And it comes with an AC adapter, which is currently upstairs. Um, it's just a regular AC adapter, pretty much. And a mini USB cable, because this can actually uh, serve multiple functions. So for starters, it has Wi-Fi, has Bluetooth, and um, it can actually connect over USB as well. So you can use this as a printer. It would show up just like a regular printer on your computer, and you can send documents to this. But it, you know, prints in a tiny little window, basically. Uh, this is a picture that I drew of uh, Samus like a very long time ago, and I printed it out. Obviously, it does not do grayscale. It can only do um, monochromatic so either fully on or fully off, but you can see that's that actually is pretty decent. The um, the pixel pitch is pretty tight, and it can print pretty small. I uh, printed out this long page. I took this on my um, my phone that's actually filming this, the S8 Plus. Some uh, test receipts that I printed, obviously. Uh, this is through the um, the Loiverse app. When you first boot up the printer, if you press and hold feed while turning it on, it will actually uh, print out a uh, calibration sort of um, self-test sheet. And you can see here it has all technical information about um, when the firmware was uploaded, what version it's on, uh, how many dots per line. One thing I have noticed is if it's very small characters or very dense, it um, does come out a little bit spotty, uh, but for most things, or additionally, if you're printing out like a large black area, um, it tends to have some spots and stuff like that. But for the most part, most of what you're printing, like a medium size to large size text, it, it's perfect. So if we just go over and open, it's called a POS printer uh, dash BT, so Bluetooth. So we can open this. Uh, we have to obviously turn on Bluetooth and you would uh, search for and connect to the printer. Okay, so once you have it paired, turned on, uh, you turn on your Bluetooth, you search for it, it'll come up as Bluetooth printer. The uh, pin number is 1234. Once this is actually paired and connected, you can go back into the app and uh, open up search for and connect to Bluetooth device and it'll be right in there. At which point it connects and we can see 
it printed out, congratulations, you've successfully connected, etc., etc., etc. Now, the more interesting part, unfortunately, oh yeah, here you go. So you can actually open up your gallery and change um, the picture, or you could actually take it directly, turn on camera and take it directly. So we are going to turn on the camera and take a picture of the printer and print it out on the printer because I think that's poetic justice. So take a picture. There we go. That looks uh, pretty good to me. And now this is wirelessly over Bluetooth. Now we just go to, um, you can see the little picture in the corner there, uh, print picture. And you can see it printed it. Now, obviously what I said about it being uh, monochromatic, it can only print black and white, obviously. And um, so yeah, this is a picture that we took. You can barely tell it's a printer. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So all in all, this is actually pretty neat. Um, I haven't tried out the Windows uh, capability, hooking this up to my uh, laptop and printing out stuff, though I don't, I, I don't doubt that it works just fine. Um, I had noticed on this tablet, this is a very old version of Android, it took a while to um, detect the, the printer and I actually had to reboot my, uh, my tablet. I think there's something screwy with the Bluetooth in this tablet. So anyway, after a while I got it working. When I actually paired this to the, uh, the camera phone that I'm actually using to record my S8 Plus, it paired the first time. I had no trouble at all. So I think it has to do with um, older tablets will have trouble with this, but it will eventually work. And once you pair the first time, it'll work just fine every time afterwards. So anyway, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for this application. There's a couple other modes where you can uh, print um, barcodes, you can generate QR code prints, um, and do graphical stuff. I can type in here. So I can do, uh, let me see. Okay, so I uh, typed a little message for you guys, and we are going to send it. I typed it and we just click uh, the send data button and it printed it and there you go. <laughs> One curious thing that it does is um, it obviously sets a certain width and it'll just roll over to the next line just like in a word processor would when you're typing. However, it ignores full words. So here I typed SGM4306 as one word but it uh, just truncates it and then moves it to the next line instead of moving the whole word. So if you are going to type something like this, like a, I don't know why you'd want to type like a letter or full sentences, you're going to have to um, insert, uh, I would need to like insert a, uh, a page return there. And then if I resend this, now it's correct. Now it's not cutting off the word. Anyway. Yeah, hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306. Um, to charge it, uh, you actually have to use a uh, DC barrel jack um, because the battery in this, let me just turn this off, the battery in this is actually a massive, um, it's a dual cell, so 8.4 volts, so two um, LiPos stacked on top of each other. Uh, the reason why it needs a higher voltage is um, thermal printers require a, quite a bit of current in order to actually write because they're heating up um, tiny little uh, thermal uh, pixels and whatnot to actually uh, activate the thermal paper. So that's why they need a, such a chunky battery like this. I've charged this once when I got this and I printed out uh, quite a bit of stuff as you can see and I haven't had to charge it since so it seems uh, like it's pretty good to go for quite a while. Uh, eject obviously ejects. Um, it uses 58 millimeter uh, thermal paper, uh, which is pretty standard um, till paper that they use, at, you know, cashiers use for receipts. So pretty cheap, easy to get. You can probably pick up, you know, a whole box of these from Staples for not too much. And uh, we can see here the eject mechanism. And uh, we see there are some screw holes. So um, I think we're at the point in this uh, review where we're going to have to tear this down and take a look inside. Okay. And yeah, this just lifts straight out. Wow, that was easy. So uh, the front button board and LEDs is just going to be a separate little board. Nothing that interesting in there. Uh, here we have, uh, looks like an inductor. 
regulator. So this is going to be for the DC charging input. Uh, it's going to be a regulator and whatnot to handle um, the input to whatever voltage that the system runs at. There's another regulator, um, switching regulator here, an, an inductor, and I'm guessing that generates a um, like a local supply voltage necessary for, um, I don't know, maybe the thermal head or whatever like that. Interesting. And so there's really not that much on the top here. Uh, you can see diode in there for one of the regulators. So this is pretty much all power stuff. Um, and I'm guessing this is uh, one regulator chip and this is the other. And there's some uh, SOT 23s uh, directly on the input of the USB. I guess um, this is a 3.3 volt, um, the logic side, I'm guessing. And we have uh, two USB ports. This one you can see um, pretty much it looks like uh, data pins are hooked up to something. That's interesting. This one just passes straight through underneath and there's uh, three screws it looks like. Okay, so we finally got it out. You can see there's only just one wide ribbon cable between the uh, the main PCB and the actual thermal printer mechanical parts themselves. We have a stepper motor here, slightly magnetic, obviously, and that drives a gear train that actually mates with this to spool the paper forward. And the entire thermal strip that sets the image is um, right here, and it's just basically a line of thermal elements, and it'll it can selectively heat or turn off um, each one to create the image and as it scrolls the paper upwards it um, basically draws each line and there's no moving parts other than the motor um, that moves the paper along uh, this is fixed and this will be the exact width of the um, the image element basically so pretty simple there's not really that much in here which is good reliability wise because there's not much to go wrong that means this is where it gets interesting. So this is the um, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module. It looks like they're using an off-the-shelf module similar to something like an HCO5. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be exactly. This will have custom firmware, I'm guessing. And you can see there's not many pins that are soldered. There's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So they're obviously using some kind of serial protocol. So this ship's firmware will have you know a certain protocol where like an AT command set uh, to send and receive data and we have a little chip here not so little actually it's an arm processor um, and this is going to be the main chip the brains of it that handle all the functionality as well as driving um, the motor and the thermal head and all that good stuff so that's where all the magic happens we have the lipo input here we have a crystal uh, beyond that we have um, I'm guessing the ribbon for the actual board somewhere around here. There's probably going to be some uh, buffering chip or something like that to actually um, to control the power elements. So we're going to have like a um, a stepper motor driver chip. Maybe that's this guy. I don't know. Uh, I can see some shunt resistors, so it's measuring something obviously. So yeah, I'm guessing that would be for feedback. And we have a um, silk chip right here. That might be for something interfacing with the thermal head or something. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, uh, we can see a programming header down at the bottom there. But yeah, the board layout looks pretty neat. Um, I like the modular use of um, the wireless chipset there. So if something fails, it's pretty easy to, to just desolder that and get a replacement or whatever. Assuming that you can get the, um, the correct module with the correct firmware. But yeah, this all looks fairly off the shelf. Um, and it's pretty neatly designed, minimal components, so if this ever needs to be serviced, it entirely could be. So we're just going to set this back in here. And I'm going to get this back together and uh, state some conclusions. Okay, we're all back together. Still powers on, still works. We're no worse for wear. So yeah, anyway, I'd like to thank uh, Moonbind for sending this in. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right once again. Um, yeah, uh, this is not the sort of uh, product that I generally review. This isn't really um, targeted towards uh, consumers or hobbyists. 
But actually, if they are, I don't know if they are willing to sell to individuals, uh, this would be the perfect platform for modifying to attach to like an Arduino or something and having a thermal printer that can print out text and graphics from an Arduino. That's what I'm interested in. However, uh, it's a solid printer. I mean, with the um, the Android app, it's pretty open source. Um, you can get documentation on everything so that you can make your own app if you wanted to. Um, or iOS or Windows, whatever you want. Um, there's plenty of information available. You can make this do pretty much whatever you want. And the hardware seems um, very simple. Um, not much to go wrong. I mean, the board's just, you know, a single board and a handful of chips on it. So definitely a good um, platform in order to tinker with, as well as, you know, if you just actually wanted to use this as a uh, receipt printer, definitely will do that. And uh, I don't think I showed you guys. I also um, print out a picture I took of my Game & Watch. You can see it's uh, Octopus. Anyway, yeah, you can see printed out tons of uh, random stuff on here. And uh, this I expect to keep on ticking for quite a while. Um, Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and enjoyed taking a look at inside one of these uh, little portable wireless thermal printers. Um, I'm sort of fascinated by the technology itself. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you guys are interested, um, I'll link um, the seller's Amazon page as well as their um, sales page or whatever I can find down below. And you can take a look at their um, thermal printers as well as their other products. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.